Hello everyone and welcome back to What the Folk. This month on Expertives Included we're going to be talking about uh, sea folk tales and uh, part of the kind of the fair folk, kind of fairy uh, tribe that lives in the sea that I'm particularly fond of are Selkies. Uh, partially they're uh, some of my favourite creatures from Magic the Gathering. One of my favourite decks is kind of based around the idea of Selkies. And also one of my favourite films, uh, Song of the Sea, is kind of all around the Selkie myth. Selkies, if you don't know, are kind of shapeshifters of a sort. Uh, while in the ocean they take on the form of a seal, and while on land they can take on the form of a human. Uh, they can kind of go through this transformation with their, with their coat. They have a silky coat, uh, which is a seal skin, which uh, if they enter the water with, then they will transform into a, a seal and uh, swim around happily. Uh, there are some uh, iterations of the story where they are essentially kind of like mermaids, but with the top half a uh, human and the bottom half of a seal. Uh, this is kind of how they're presented in the Wizards of the Coast uh, collectible card game, but most kind of traditional uh, tales of Selkies that I found tend to have them as the more shapeshifter variety rather than kind of the mermaid half human half seal. And while I was kind of thinking, kind of trying to search for stories about Selkies, not having a whole uh, deal of luck. I happened across a new book which I purchased, which you might not be able to see. It's A Dictionary of Fairies by Catherine Briggs, and I was in two minds of whether to pick it up, but then I saw that it did actually have stories of Selkies, so I thought it's obviously divine providence that I needed to pick up this book. And what I've learned from uh, this book is that Selkies are just one kind of part of a... Uh, it's kind of a lesser used name for uh, seal maidens. Uh, seal maidens or the Rhone, as they are known in the Gaelic. Um, Rhone is Gaelic name for seal and it's got kind of several uh, several entries. But the, the story that I've kind of been drawn to the most is under the section of Rhone and so that's the one which I'm going to read for you today. Um, I haven't had much time to prepare, we're all busy with NaNoWriMo, so I'm, I'm just going to do a reading. Hopefully you'll enjoy as much as I did. So, where do we start? Um, I might just read the entire entry. So, here we go. The Rome. From Dictionary Fairies by Catherine Briggs. Roan is the Gaelic name for seal, but the old people believed, as, as the Shetlanders believed for their selkies, that these were a kind of fairy creature, who wore their skins to travel through the sea, but could cast them off and appear in human shape. The Roan were the gentlest of all the fairy people. Selkies avenged the death of their kin by raising storms and sinking the boats of the seal catchers, but the Roan seemed to have borne little resentment against their persecutors. Grant Stewart, in his Highland Superstitions and Amusements, tells of a seal catcher who lived near John O'Groats, who had one day lost his clasp knife in the attempt to kill a large dog seal. That night there came a knock at his door, and a stranger leading a fine horse asked, if he, asked his name and told him that he had been sent to order a large number of seal skins from him. The customer was at hand and would make the bargain with him himself. The two got on and the horse plunged away at such a pace that the following wind seemed to blow in their faces. They rode along the wild coast until they reached the great crag above the sea. Where are you taking me? said the fisherman. Get down and you'll soon see, said the stranger. And as their feet touched the land he seized the fisherman and leapt with him right over the crag. Down and down they went into the depths of the sea, until they came to a cave which was full of the seal people. As the fisherman perceived that he himself had become a seal, his companion was a seal too, but he and all the rest spoke and behaved as like human mortals. 
they were all very sad. The fisherman was in great terror, for he knew that he must have killed many of their friends. His guide showed him a clasp knife. Do you know this knife? he said, and the fisherman had no choice but to confess that it was his, though he feared that in a moment it would be plunged into him. It was with this knife that you wounded my father, said the stranger, and only you can heal him. He led the fisherman into an, into an inner cave, where the big dog seal that had escaped that day lay in great pain. The seal people told him what to do, and with the knife he made a circle around the wound and smoothed it with his hand, wishing with all his heart that it might be healed. And so it was, and the old seal got up from his couch as well as, well as he ever had been. The fisherman still feared that he would be punished, but they told him not to be afraid. If he would swear a solemn oath never to kill a seal again, he should be taken back to his wife and children. He took the oath with full full solemn, solemnity. He was very solemn when he took the oath. The stranger took him back to the cliff where they where their horse was waiting, and left him at his own door, with a gift of money that was worth the price of many seal skins. And then the rest of the entry tells of seal maidens and other selkie myths. But that's the story that I was quite fond of. Uh, in two weeks' time I might tell you more stories of selkies, or I might try to find a new, uh, a different aspect of sea life, of sea folklore that I can share with you. I'll discuss it over with Keir, and we'll decide what's best. And until then, I'm very tired, and I need to get back to writing. So, have a good week, and I'll see you possibly, if we're doing a joint vlog uh, this Friday, possibly see you then. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you again.